mm, how does it fit into economics in general? Well, my own research in empirical microeconomics has focused on understanding the employment, earnings and savings decisions of families and individuals. In particular, how families are impacted by adverse economic conditions and how policy can best be designed to mitigate these adverse events. The aim is to provide an empirical foundation to address many of the key questions in economics. How are savings decisions made? What determines employment and retirement? What factors drive inequality and poverty? And so on. These research uh, contributions, by the way, stem from a growing availability of microdata in the 1980s and now extensively developed. And they were motivated by the importance of developing a rigorous evidence-based analysis of the impact and design of public policies, in my particular case of tax and welfare policies. <laughs> a good question. Um, well, my research is driven in part by policy questions. Uh, they stimulate all of our work really deep down, but also by a curiosity to understand the behaviour of individuals and families, really with the idea that by understanding behaviour better, we can design better policies, make the economy work better. And in that sense, driven all the time by uh, important social issues. And the economy is changing all the time, throwing up new, uh, new issues, new problems. And it's an ever-changing world. And it's an ever-changing uh, economics that needs to be uh, brought to bear on that world. And the excitement of empirical microeconomics is really getting down to the way the microeconomy works, how people uh, live and interact in, in their own individual lives. <laughs> Another good question. Um, well, my, I, I've always believed strongly, and I think uh, this has been borne out by uh, research and policy together, that um, you can't do good policy without really understanding behaviour. And to understand behaviour, you have to do it in a way that really uh, respects what's going on in the data, what people are actually doing, not bringing to bear unnecessary assumptions. It's a very complicated world people are making decisions in, and you need to reflect that in your models of behaviour. But microeconomics itself brings a kind of logic, a formulation, a way of thinking about the interactions between people, between people in firms, in their workplaces, in families. It brings a kind of logic. Together with the data, it can generate the most incredibly enlightening and insightful uh, models with which to deal with policy. Oh, well, you can't underestimate the importance of uh, large data, it's certainly in what I do. Uh, it's all based on uh, micro data, that is data that surveys, longitudinal surveys that follow individuals that are linked with administrative surveys, perhaps on their schooling behaviour, on their visits to hospitals, to doctors, and uh, their earnings in firms, their pension contributions. If you put all this together, you might stand some chance of really understanding what's going on. So the big data revolution, in the sense that we can now access large amounts of individual data, um, has been absolutely critically important in the development of this work. But that alone isn't really enough. Uh, what's happened at the same time, and we've certainly contributed to this, has been the development of new, what we call, microeconometric techniques. That's methods, computer methods really, or computer models, for trying to uh, elicit what's going on, to try and figure out what's going on 
in the world we're looking at with all that data to try and bring in a sense, you know, some logic to the data um, in a way that will uh, help us understand behaviour. So the development of statistical techniques, microeconometric techniques, for studying the dynamics of the world we live in at the micro level has been another fundamental thing that's, uh, that's allowed us to develop this work. And of course we've contributed quite enormously to, uh, to that development. Well, you've got to be optimistic in this world and uh, you have to think you're having some impact on uh, the wider society. Uh, that's, in a sense, why we're, we're here. We might do it through many different ways. Um, but I think, we, looking back over the years, I think we've been motivated very strongly by social issues and by trying to design improved welfare and tax uh, policy. And I hope that we've had some... I've, my research and the research of my colleagues who've worked with me has had some impact, some noticeable impact. Perhaps most obviously through uh, my um, interaction with the great, in the unique Institute for Fiscal Studies where I've been uh, research director for nearly 30 years and which really gives us a leverage into the uh, policy domain, into the policy making uh, domain so we can really understand the issues and have some influence in policy. Of course, perhaps most of the time what we what the best influence we have is in just stopping stupid policies happening by pointing out that they're really not the best policies to choose.